As you configure Proxbox for you, you'll probably notice it can send you emails. For example, you can send alerts when a backup job is run. But in order to be able to send emails, you need to configure support for an SMTP server. Now, checking the documentation, we can see that Proxmox VE relies on the SendMail binary, and this is something provided with Postfix. But how do you configure Postfix so that Proxmox VE can send you email notifications? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, as far as I'm aware, we can't actually edit the configuration for Postfix directly through the GUI, in which case we're going to have to do it through the command line. Now, if you want, you can open up a remote session using SSH, but what I'm going to do is just pick the actual server and then click on Shell, because that will give me a Shell session which does support copying and pasting uh, through the web browser here. And as you can see, we're logged in as root. So what I then want to do is edit the actual config file itself, which is main.cf. I'll use nano to do that, but the file is in slash etsy slash postfix. Now, to make things a bit easier, what I'm going to do is disable this line here, relay host equals. The reason being is that I can then copy and paste in all the information I need right at the actual end uh, of the actual file here. So first thing we've got is a line to actually tell it about the actual SMTP server. In my case, I'm using MailRise as my SMTP gateway. So I'm giving it the fully qualified domain name. Uh, makes a lot of sense really, because I do want to use TLS encryption. Uh, typically the certificate will be based on the fully qualified domain name. It is possible to use IP addresses instead, but that really depends on what the certificate supports, but usually that's the way you do it. Now, what you put in there really depends on what uh, email server that uh, you're using. Now the square brackets that we've got are to disable MX lookups. It's no point really because we're actually telling it what server to talk to directly. Then we've got a colon which is followed by the actual TCP port to connect on. So for MailRise by default that's 8025 but for things like uh, Google's Gmail for example it will be something different. So you'll have to put in whatever's relevant to you. Then we've got a lot of information here about the actual connection that we want. So we've got one line to say that we do want to use TLS, but depends on the server. Another line to say that, yes, we want to authenticate the actual session first, which again, depends on the server. Now here, I've had to change the default settings. By default, this would be no plain text and no anonymous. The only problem is I'm somewhat limited in terms of the actual authentication mechanisms that are supported by MailRise. So I've had to disable the no plain text uh, option so that I can actually use uh, plain text authentication here. So that's why I'm only showing no anonymous. Now this really depends on the server that you're using. So you might leave this uh, line out, for example, see if it works because it's more secure if you don't use plain text. But in my case, I don't have much option there. Next thing we need to do is because we're actually going to be authenticating, I need to have a username and password. Now, I could have just put those in that line if I wanted to, but I'm going to keep those in a separate actual password uh, file. So I'm actually telling it where to go and look. We will have to create this later on though. And then I've got some settings to just to make this as secure as I possibly can. So we're telling it we want a, a secure security level. So we're up to TLS 1.2 and above basically. Um, the ciphers, we want to, that set to high so we get um, better security in terms of the actual choice of ciphers uh, that get used. And then we want to match certificates based on domain name or subdomains. And then finally, because we're actually using TLS, we actually need to tell it where to go looking for uh, root certificates because it has to actually trust a certificate to be able to get a secure connection. Now, what we're pointing it to is just the actual uh, default database, which is the root um, database for the actual operating system itself. But now that I've got those details in there, I can save the file. And that updates our actual configuration for Postfix. Now, although we could have actually configured the username and password in the main config file, uh, the trouble is it's not really a good idea especially if at some point you need to hand that config over to maybe a third party, for instance, 
last thing you want is to be handing over sensitive information like usernames and passwords. So it's always better to refer out to a separate actual password file, in which case we actually need to create one. So I'm going to use nano, create what will be just a plain text file and say in slash Etsy slash postfix slash sassel. And we call that file sassel underscore P A double S W D hit return. And then I'll paste in the actual details uh, that we need. So what we've got is the same fully qualified domain name enclosed in brackets, followed by a colon, followed by the actual uh, TCP port. So 8025 in my case, then we've got the username and password. Now, what you put in here really depends on your own server setup. Uh, the username might even be an email address, depending on what you're actually connecting to and authenticating with. Obviously, I would suggest using something a lot less obvious than that as a username, uh, but this is just a demo. And again, when it comes to passwords, you want to be using something a lot longer, stronger, much more complicated than what I've got here. But because it's just a demo and because this is a little change before the video even gets uploaded, I'm not too uh, concerned about um, showing that sort of information because I've got to show you at least something on how to actually set this up. So we're going to save that file and that gives us just a plain text file, but that's not really what we've actually told uh, Postfix to use. So I need to run another command, which is postmap, and then we'll use that to create an actual file that Postfix itself can use. So we're just referencing back to the actual plain text file there. If I then go and have a look in that folder, what you'll see is there's more than just that one plain text file that we've got there. We've now got a .db file that's been created by Postmap and really that's what Postfix is actually going to be using. So the problem is if we have a look at the actual file that we've got there, just go by our plain text file and you can see it's, it's all out in the open. Now, what we can do is make things slightly more secure. It's not ideal, but we can at least restrict access to the actual files there. So I'm just going to use chmod to restrict access to root only. And I want to do it for both files. So if I have a look in there again, you'll see that only the root accounts got access to these files. But at least now we've actually got a separate password file for Postfix to use. Now, although Postfix is installed by default on operating systems like Debian 12, and this happens to be the latest version of Debian, you can still run into actual authentication problems when you're using Postfix because both parties can't agree on an authentication mechanism. So to avoid that or resolve that, what you do need to do is to install some additional software. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to run apt update first because we want to make sure we get the latest version. Then we're going to install some additional modules that can be used here for authentication. So I'm getting to install libsassl2 modules and gives you a bit of details here about the actual uh, packages that are being installed. So that's finished, it's downloaded, it's unpacked it, and installed it. But one thing we now need to do is because we've actually changed the configuration for Postfix. While I'm here, what I'm going to actually do is to actually update Postfix itself, get it to load in that newer configuration. And we'll do that by running Postfix and then reload. And that's it. That takes care of Postfix itself. We should now be ready, at least on this side, in terms of the configuration setup of Postfix itself. Now, if you're using a public email server, or you're actually getting a certificate for your own server signed by a public CA, then you can just skip ahead to the next section. Because what I need to do is to actually update the computer here to trust the actual root CA that I'm using internally to sign certificates for my internal email server. And to do that, I actually need to update the root store. So first thing I'm going to do is to create a new folder so I'm just going to make a new directory there and I'm just going to call this extra and it's in slash user slash share slash CA dash certificates. And then I'm then going to edit the config file. 
So that's ca-certificates.conf in your slash Etsy folder. Now we've got all of these certificates right here. What I need to do is go right to the end here and tell it about a root certificate that I'm going to add in. And I'm going to call that root-ca.crt. I'm putting it in the extra folder there. Save that file. Now, what you would then do is need to get the root certificate uh, actual file into that folder. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste uh, the contents in. So I'm just going to hit return. Then I'm just going to, as I say, copy and paste in the actual certificate. And then once I've done that, I do need to actually update uh, the actual system to actually use that. So I'm just going to paste another command, which is update-ca-certificates. And then off it goes, and it, basically it's just adding uh, that actual certificate that we've got there right to the end, because there's a CRT file um, in there, which is basically what we've referenced within the config file. That's the, the default um, root certificate store. And it's just basically appending that extra certificate on the end there. So it's, that's basically it now. Um, should now be in a situation where this server actually trusts the actual certificate that's been assigned to my MailRise server. Well, now that we've got Postfix configured, it actually makes sense to actually test it first before we start trying to use it with likes of Proxmox VE here. Now, can you do that? It varies. There's lots of different ways you can do it. But I'm just going to copy and paste in this command where we're using the echo command to create the message, then forwarding that over to the mail command. And then I've got a dash S parameter to define what the subject is, followed by the actual email address to send this to. What that email address is for you, well, it really depends on your system, but in my case, I'm using MailRise. I haven't set up any domains, so I'm just using the default one of MailRise.xyz. I want this to go to Slack, so that's why the actual email address for me is Slack at MailRise.xyz. Once I hit return, we should get an alert pops up uh, shortly. There you go. So one thing to point out is that it says it's coming from root at pvedemo1.homelab.lan. Now, a reason for that is if we just go back to the configuration here of Postfix, that's what I've got the setting here of my host name as, and obviously we're using root as the actual user account. So that's just something to bear in mind. But in any case, as far as we can see here, Postfix is working perfectly fine. So the next thing to do really is as an example, I'm running a backup job. If I edit that, what I've got is a setting to send emails to Slack at mailrise.xyz. The idea is to get an alert when the backup actually finishes. Just checking it is set to backup uh, that virtual machine which is on that server. So this server will actually be running the job. So I'm just going to click run now then click yes. So what they should do is then start to back up that virtual machine. You can see there's a little uh, marker just popped up there just to say that it's it's actually backing this up. But once it actually completes, I should then get an alert uh, pops up here to actually tell me about that backup. Well, there you go. Proxmox VE has now been able to send me an email, which in my case, MailRise has turned into an actual Slack message, but it means now I'm actually getting the updates that I need. Well, what we've done here is to configure Proxmox for ye to be able to send us email alerts, and that's an extremely useful feature. Although, granted, you do have to do this through the command line, but Postfix isn't something that Proxmox themselves are providing. Instead, they're taking advantage of software that's already included with the Debian operating system. Bear in mind, though, if you have a cluster, you're going to have to repeat this process on every single node that you've got. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button. Because that way, 
that'll help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.